Hey guys, Alex Muzikin here from Mr. Build It. This week, we're building a custom putter. So without wasting any time, let's get into the video. Let's go. Getting started on this project, I wanted to work with something that I already had in my reservoir, so I tapped into my ever-grown pile of scrap wood in my workshop. After finding a couple of pieces of walnut that would work well, I then threw everything on my bandsaw. Now, I'm using the bandsaw specifically to break everything down into workable pieces. You know, general shapes that have been cut off from previous projects kind of mess with your mind, so I just need to visualize exactly what I had. Once I broke the pieces down the way I wanted them, I started creating more of this matchbook or a mirror image of each other. So I taped the two pieces together and I cleaned it up again on my bandsaw. Now that I had this rough canvas that I'm working with, uh, the next mission is to create two chambers that would be carrying the weights uh, of the putter. So I created a line down the bottom and then made two incision points where I would take my Forstner bit and bore out holes on the top and the bottom side of this putter head. Once the holes are bored out, I then needed to find some weights. So I didn't want to buy any beads or any kind of lead. So I decided to use some of the big heavy duty lug nuts that I had laying around the house anyways. Well, I don't think they're lug nuts. I just think they're just basic lag bolt nuts. But anyway, they worked so perfectly. Once everything was closed up, I was now ready to glue them all in. For the glue, I'm using Gorilla Glue. It's my first time using it on a project. It worked okay. Um, I still prefer the five minute epoxy specifically for the time. And at the same time, when the Gorilla Glue settles, it cures into this frothy base thing, which I'm not a big fan of. I do this every single time. I buy a box of gloves so my hands don't get messy. And then I forget mid project that I have a box of gloves. After ensuring a nice glue up, I clamped it overnight and did not touch it. They say you can work on it after like two hours, but I didn't want any glue to get on my bandsaw blade, so I just, I just wanted to be safe. While it was drying, this gave me the perfect time to work on the golf shaft itself. Uh, the ranges go between like 35 inches tall and 40 inches. I'm a tall dude, so I kind of use 37 inches tall. I needed a 160 degree angle at the bottom, so I used my metal cutting setup, which is the Rigid Mega Max. It's the new one, 18 volt brushless with the Octane Boost powered battery, uh, the whole setup with a Diablo metal cutting blade. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Great metal cutting setup if you don't have anything yet. Now, once that was done, I laid out my template to my existing putter to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to come from a factory. Then I ensured that it's ready to go and I got my welder out. The welder that I use is just a MIG welder. It has argon gas to help. Uh, and then I just cleaned all the weld perfectly, lay down good beads, and then use my angle grinder to make a nice flush, presentable and pretty. Now for the handle, I use the same leftover scrap pieces. I chopped it down about 16 inches long on my miter station and then ripped it down the middle to create two mirror images of each other. And now I found the middle of it. Uh, and then here's the tricky part. You have to create a channel down the middle to fit the shaft in. So I used a rotary burr. It's a carbide tip wood carving tool and freehanded this half inch wide channel that would go down the middle. Once I found a nice good fit, I laid down some of the Gorilla Glue and then I clamped this piece together. Again, Again, let it sit overnight. Don't be a hero, just that way it'd be far more enjoyable to work with. After let it sit overnight, I removed all the clamps after everything was dried and I need to start squaring this puppy up. So I put one side on the belt sander to create a nice even side and then put it on the table saw to create a nice parallel matching side. Once I had two matching sides, I then put it on the miter station to square it up for its final dimension. Now that I had this beautiful little, little square canvas to work with, I now decided to draw the pattern that I wanted. I kept it sharp, slick, kind of futuristic. I had a lot of fun doing so. Now down the middle on the side, I created a taper on my bandsaw. Now this might not be the safest way to do it because I already cut the bottom parts off, but be mindful, be careful, and find smarter ways to do this. I'm just glad I have my fingers. Typically to taper or miter any kind of edge, you'd have to use a router bit, but because this is not a flat surface, that's not really an option. So I had to do everything by hand using a hand rasp. And it's the same thing as the, the burr, it's just a carbide tip flat surface that allows for me to kind of carve away wood like butter. Little spoiler, it gets really addicting very fast. Getting ready to start carve out our hand grips. I'm using shaping discs from Cutsall. Essentially, they're abrasive wheels that go on your angle grinder to allow for you to cut and move the wood very fast, very efficiently in a very, very, very fun way.
So I really wanted to deck this putter head out with some bling. So I picked up the steel 16 gauge plate from my local Home Depot. I trimmed the corners with these shears and then rounded them over on an abrasive pad. Once everything was done, because steel tends to bend, I used a little tapping hammer to flatten out any areas that kind of bent a little bit out of shape because how thin it is. And then I traced the area where it would be seated, uh, kind of having a place for, for everything. And then once everything was done, I was getting ready to start carving everything out. To bore out the seats for the steel plates, I basically took my palm router and I bored out about one to two sixteenths of an inch seat for everything. Take your time, go slow. And the parts where I couldn't fit the router in, I just used a little rotary tool with a cutting attachment and freehanded everything out. This created a really cool pattern that I think for the next time, I'll probably make a cool decorative piece like this. Now that everything's prepped and ready to go, I switched over to the five minute epoxy because it's something I've used before. Now, my technique here is put the epoxy down, put the plate, put the tape. Now the tape is to prevent too much squeeze out and then each plate gets its own small clamp. Don't put too much pressure on the clamp for two reasons. Number one, you'll bend the plate. Number two, you'll squeeze out all the epoxy that's needed to work as glue. Take your time, trust me. Also, this is a messy job. Because metal has these inconsistent tendencies with scratches and dings, I wanted to put my own finish on this golf shaft. So I took 80 grit belt sand paper and I started working around in circles to put my own scratches and finish. That was even clean and really pretty. When cleaning up the epoxy, you can get away with by just using 150 grit sandpaper. Now, one thing I'll tell you is take little breaks. Don't let the metal get too hot or else it will start melting the epoxy. So go slow, take breaks and be patient. For the most part, putters are usually have a 70 degree angle, so I use this metal jig to clamp everything down at 70 degrees. Bore that hole about a half an inch deep and then pre-mix some epoxy and let the shaft settle inside the putter head. And before the glue has a chance to settle, it's a good idea to just triple check to make sure that all the angles are appropriate to from the shaft to the putter head itself. And for finish, I just use the tongue oil finish. It's just a rub on application. Be sure to cover the metal as well because it's exposed raw material. And if it contacts with water without being sealed, it will react and get rusty. So be mindful of that. Guys, I am so happy how this thing turned out. I'm gonna keep improving my craft to see how much better I can make these golf clubs. I've been challenged by a few things I wasn't comfortable with, like steel inlays. That was the very first time I had a lot of fun with it, and I definitely think I'm gonna keep using that technique more and more. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. Get out there, don't be afraid to try. Get your hands dirty and learn something from it. It'd mean the world to me if you guys shared this video. Like, comment down below. Make sure you hit that notification button, the, the subscribe button, if you haven't yet done so already. Tune in out this week, we'll see you guys next week. I gotta get off this course before I get hit with the ball. See ya, bye.